Okay, thanks very much, everybody, for uh, having me. So, um, first of all, I just wanted to say a huge big congrats to the whole IPFS Protocol Labs team for this pretty significant milestone. Um, and thanks a lot for bringing us along for the ride. So, yeah, just a big congrats to everybody. Um, and then uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what Textile has been doing in anticipation of and on top of and with um, IPFS and IPFS tooling and that sort of thing. So I can't see any messages or anything. So if, uh, I'm, if you can't hear me or something, just yell at me instead. Um, so hi, I'm Carson Farmer uh, from Textile. Uh, we, as a team, have been working with and on IPFS for about, uh, about just over three years now, I think. So that's reasonably long, I think, in the scheme of things community-wise. Um, and we've seen a lot of changes over that time, documentation, tooling, all that stuff, um, big improvements. And we've also done a lot of experimentation ourselves um, in terms of figuring out in what environments IPFS um, behaves nicely in what environments it doesn't behave very nicely and um, we've thought a lot about the developer experience um, our own experience and the experience of other developers around this so um, that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today is um, a little bit of you know how textile uh, landed on some of the products and tools that we've built on IPFS and then go into some details about what they do and how they work and why we built them specifically. So um, you may or may not be familiar with some of our early experiments um, that we did on top of IPFS and um, the sort of D-Web space, in particular textile photos is something that some people might be familiar with. And textile photos was essentially a fantastic experiment into just what you can, what you can actually start building on top of um, you know, web two, or sorry, web three or peer to peer technologies. And we learned a ton, you know, throughout that experimentation. We learned what does work, we learned what doesn't work. Um, we learned and developed a bunch of pretty strong opinions about, you know, mobile environments, web environments, desktop environments, and what uh, makes sense from, uh, from actually building products. And so today, I'm going to talk to you about um, es essentially the outcome or the learned um, tooling that we developed out of the, that initial experiment. So I'm going to focus on um, essentially three legs of a four leg chair that uh, Textile is currently building. And um, so we're going to focus on uh, essentially solving problems for real developers on top of IPFS. So I'm going to start um, with Threads DB, which is um, something that our team has been working on for a while and it's um we've written a white paper about this so you know it's it's good science um and uh there's a bunch of different implementations and i'll talk about a little bit about those and um, how you can get involved and that sort of thing but the the take-home point is here you've got a problem um you want to build an app and you probably you know you want some sort of dynamic data so that you know someone's uploading photos or someone's chatting with friends or someone's having some engaging experience um, with other people or with your product or with your service, um, there's some dynamic data involved. So you want that. You probably want some level of security and assurance that um, the data is actually getting where it's supposed to be going, that your um, users can maintain control of their own identity and data and um, interactions. Uh, you probably want it to be reasonably scalable um, there's nothing worse than a sort of uh, experience that falls apart as soon as you start to um, add new users to a chat thread or something like that. Um, and for the crowd here, you probably want all this to work on top of IPFS. Um, you want it to work in a peer-to-peer -peer way. You want um, essentially a, a very solid Web2 experience, but you want all of the ideals and benefits of Web3. And so... Um, we spent a lot of time figuring out exactly how that might um, work and what that looks like um, in a lot of our early development. And when we sort of went back to the drawing board and really started to um, figure out what exactly this needs to look like, we wrote this white paper and we came up with something we call ThreadsDB. So ThreadsDB is a 
uh, here's the tagline here, a secure decentralized peer-to-peer -peer database, and it's built on IPFS, uh, libp2p and IPLD. And uh, the idea is here is basically, if I'm a developer or if I'm a development team and I wanna build an engaging experience for my users, I don't want my users or my developers to have to learn a whole brand new language and a whole way of thinking um, to get onboarded and get um, started. So we've developed a, essentially a MongoDB-like interface where it feels like a local database, but operates like a dis decentralized or distributed database. Um, you've got you know, very um, modular access control. You've got um, uh, implementation agnostic identity, uh, conflict resolution, CRDTs, all the things that you need in a dis decentralized database, but over top of an API that feels like, you know, you're just adding a document or modifying a document. And then for our team, a really important thing is ensuring that users have control of their own data. Um, and that's actually a huge part of what um, brought us into the IPFS community in the first place is this idea of content addressing, providing a way for people to really control where and how they address and access their data. And in order to do that in a nice, safe way, we've built encryption into the actual protocol level layer of Threads DB that provides ways to manage um, access control, but also to then facilitate services on top of that. So you can have trustless third-party pinning services or relays or archiving um, so that your users know that their data is gonna stick around, but they don't need to worry that someone else is snooping on what they're um, creating. So here's an example of actual code that you would write using Threads DB. And, you know, initialize a new database, you specify a schema using uh, well-known JSON schema.orgs for your database, you create collections, you insert values or astronauts in this case, you can query it using MongoDB um, query syntax, and you get all the nice sort of uh, modern web um, style interactions. So you get an a async um, iterable that you can go through and, and all these nice things. And then every time you add something to the database, it in the background um, syncs across all of its different peers using a bunch of the really cool technology that we've already heard about on the call here. And um, there's a bunch of really nice things that happen in the background here. In particular, um, it's designed to be offline first. So essentially you've got a database that not only feels local, but actually operates local when it doesn't have a network connection. Um, so that as soon as you come back online, you can start to tell everybody, hey, I've got some data, you might wanna pull it. So I'm not gonna dwell on this too much because there's some really exciting new things um, that I wanna talk about in the next couple slides, but check out the white paper, check out our Go implementation, check out our JavaScript implementation and um, come build some stuff uh, on top of ThreadsDB. But what about if you have a bunch of like really large files or directories that you wanna manage on IPFS? So, IPFS is already really quite good at this. Um, you know, IPFS add, you get some data, it uh, chunks it up into a beautiful Merkle DAG for you. You can share that, you can pass around just the top level hash, that's fantastic. Um, but again, if you wanna work with dynamic data or you're collaborating on a um, single folder in a Dropbox-like way, or um, you've got a team that, where you're trying to manage team assets, you want something that's sort of persistent is dynamic and feels again like you're working on a local folder. Um, and so that's something that we, uh, a product that we've developed called Buckets. And Buckets is just a really nice slick wrapper on top of um, the IPFS um, mutable file system. But what it's designed for is essentially representing dynamic folders on top of threads and on top of IPFS. Um, it's got an API that's not unlike like say like an S3 bucket or something like that. Um, it's designed for collaborative multi-user folders um, that you can persist on remote IPFS peers. So it works really nicely with um, pinning services. In fact, the APIs are designed to be adopted fairly easily by um, pinning services or our own pinning service. Um, but the really, really cool thing about buckets, um, and we'll probably don't have time to do a demo today, but um, this is kind of, this has blown my mind. So here we go. Um, hopefully you guys think it's pretty cool. So buckets are designed to be highly interoperable. Every bucket is essentially a folder 
okay? And when you add data to that folder, it's actually an instance inside of a thread DB um, running locally. So it's essentially like a document in a database and you can query it and you can treat it effectively like a document. Okay, except that this is like binary file based data or a whole folder of binary file based data. It's also its own HTTP um, domain or gateway. Um, and it actually takes, we take pretty cool advantage of some of the new um, subdomain uh, properties of uh, IPFS 0.5 to do some of this stuff. So essentially, you know, your folder is your, you know, static website. Well, actually you can just address that as if it's a website online, it'll be rendered um, like a website and you, um, it's get, you get all the benefits of that, except that it's a dynamic um, folder as well. It, there's a, a phone in the background, apologies. Um, so you essentially can deploy your blog as a stat static site that gets dynamic updates. But here's the really cool thing. Every bucket is also itself an IPNS address. So the, the unique bucket ID is also an IPNS ID. So every time you update your bucket, you also in the background update an IPNS address and Therefore, you can do all sorts of like DNS link um, type uh, linking back to your bucket so that every time you update your bucket, you automatically get, um, you know, your URL, whatever, will, will automatically point to the latest IPNS um, hash or to your, your, sorry, your persistent IPNS hash. So you have literally a dynamic folder in IPFS with all the benefits of IPFS um, that gets updated automatically in the background. But the big piece there is like um, with, with, peer-to-peer -peer systems, there's lots of different ways that you can address something. And our big um, philosophy on our team is that you need to have um, different ways of addressing the same thing. So, so that if one of those things doesn't work, you've always got a backup. So with buckets, you have IPNS, you have um, actually all of the updates are also published over PubSub. You have um, uh, direct gateway access. You also have the IPFS protocol because of course, if it's an IPNS address, it's also an IPFS address. Um, so you've got all these different ways of accessing content. So no matter what, if you're a developer and your users want to be able to access, you know, their data or your deployed service, you, they always can, depending on what sort of um, connection they're able to manage. This means that you can deploy a lot lighter weight apps because you don't need a full blown IPFS peer necessarily to access um, your website or your data. So we're actually, I guess, kind of launching this softly right now as I'm speaking out loud. So definitely check it out. Um, we've just updated a bunch of docs for this. Um, we've got some blog posts that are be coming out. Um, so check that stuff out. Um, and then I can also talk about something very exciting. Do I still have a little bit of time? Molly, just say yes or no. Um, Go for it. Awesome, okay. Cool. So the other really exciting thing um, that we're also launching as I'm speaking um, is something that our team is calling the hub, Textile Hub. Basically, this is uh, infrastructure and tooling and persistence layer for a lot of the threads DB and buckets um, tooling that Textile is deploying as a cloud service. So um, developers can access all this really cool stuff. Um, and right now you can access this really cool stuff for free. Um, and you can do things like uh, persist your buckets and you can persist thread data. And the really, really cool thing and the piece that our, all of this design is built around is the idea that you, you as a developer can persist and store data on behalf of a user, but so that that user has full control of all of that data and information. Um, and in fact, you can design it such that the user holds all of the, all of the um, keys to access the raw data and you, the developer, um, don't necessarily need to. Or you can, depending on what that, how that relationship needs to be set up. So essentially, you have a remote IPFS and threads DB peers that um, can change the way you build your apps. They make it so that you don't need to worry about spinning up your own infrastructure. Um, and they set it up so that it's very easy to pin and um, ensure that data and content for your users sticks around. Um, it's, you know, we basically designed this whole thing with the developer experience kind of as the first thing. And then, okay, how do we, we actually make that happen in the background? Um, so there's a lot of experimentation, a lot of testing out um, with partners, um, including working with folks um, like Fleek 
Um, and of course, uh, the team, uh, any type team has been building stuff with threads um, and now the new threads DB uh, for a while now. So um, a lot of what we do is just facilitating developer uh, experience. And that kind of boils down to um, Textile's kind of opinion about how all this stuff needs to work. If we want a mass adoption of, of IPFS and of Web3 technologies, we need really great experiences to be um, for users to come to. And until we get a lot of developers building those experiences, um, we're not going to see that mass adoption. So we're tool builders and we hope that, you know, application developers build on top of our tools and then people build on top of that and everybody wins. Um, so do ask me about um, the hub stuff and uh, what we can do there. The last little piece I want to say about that, and this is something that we're really excited about as well, is we're talking about user control of data, but potentially paid for with Filecoin. So um, the hub is designed to work with the product we've been working on called PowerGate, which basically lets you um, back up and store buckets and threads on Filecoin. And that will be available essentially at the launch of mainnet and um, even before on testnet so that users can or developers can essentially uh, develop applications that work now on IPFS that will pretty much seamlessly and with a fairly low um, uh, barrier to entry allow them to start playing around with Filecoin. So if you're at all curious about how might I be able to take advantage of Filecoin um, in my application, how can I make sure that my user's data is persisted, um, how can I allocate storage space on behalf of my users um, as I test this out and I don't want to charge them? Um, all that sort of stuff you should be able to experiment with really easily so that we get more developers adopting some of these new ideas. And so that's the whole idea of, of the hub. And we'll be adding um, this, these features for um, uh, integrating with Filecoin uh, right away as soon as that stuff um, is available. So uh, definitely come check out uh, our GitHub and you can see the, the progress that's happening there. Um, and I can, if I have time, just a little demo of how buckets work um, so that you can get an idea of what the sort of user um, or developer experience looks like there. Um, so this would be like a developer creating a new bucket for a particular demo. And, you know, um, maybe they've got a whole static site that they want to deploy or even just a little index of that HTML um, that they want to um, pop up. And this is just, you know, like you would expect on IPFS, except every time you update this, it's going to push and then automatically update all the underlying IPNS um, and pub sub and all that good stuff in the background so that users can access their web page. And then if you use our um, gateways, we do a bunch of magic um, rendering so that websites look really nice and automatically do local, or uh, sorry, relative links and all that stuff um, very easily. But of course, everything is also IPFS. So you've get all the benefits of the whole IPFS infrastructure as well. Um, so I think that's pretty close to my time. Um, thanks a lot for listening. And um, yeah, have a good, uh, rest of the day. This is all very exciting. Um, again, thanks a lot to the IPFS team for bringing us along um, and huge congrats to the release.